There are many age-old debates that surround the Sonic franchise which rage on to this day. Black or green eyes, tan or blue arms, friends or no friends, and so on. One of these arguments has gotten a bit of a resurgence with the footage from Sonic Frontiers, and that is the question on what type of art style is best for Sonic. Now, that is a wide topic with all sorts of arguments. To be more specific to the recent developments, people have been questioning if the seemingly photorealistic style of Frontiers is a worthy match for Sonic the Hedgehog. Some people believe that Sonic is a cartoon character that should be in a cartoon environment, and that more realistic or simply not stylized visuals cause a disconnect. Some people believe that as graphics have improved, Sonic should have a realistic art style, down to even a redesign of Sonic himself. Others see no issue in how Frontiers has presented its world. Whilst this certainly does not apply to everyone, part of this argument stems from the belief that there is a one true art style for Sonic, or that there is an original and more proper style. I believe that for those who take that stance, there has been a fundamental misunderstanding of the evolution on how Sonic's world has been presented over the years. Perhaps some of these people have not cared to look back at the franchise's history. I cannot be sure, but what we will be doing today is going over the past for ourselves to see if we can find an answer. The classics themselves have a great variety of visual expression, but they are largely irrelevant towards today's discussion. Ever since the series made its true step into the world of 3D, the classic sprite-based styles have been long since abandoned for mainline titles. With that in mind, let's take a look at the early 2000s and how they were presented. Looking at titles like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, you can see that there was a clear effort made to portray the world Sonic ran through to some degree of realism. Emerald Coast has beaches with tourist structures decorating them, rocky outcroppings, palm trees with accurate enough shapes and leaves, and even whales. Of course, some of these elements are implemented in unrealistic ways, such as how there are springs and dash panels everywhere, or how the stage takes place on pockets of fantastically shaped rocky pathways. The fact that these games feature familiar real-world elements but can mould them into fictional shapes does not necessarily prevent this from being considered somewhat realistic. The major factor is the quantity of them, as in to say, how far can it go before it breaks the player's sense of disbelief? Of course, no beach resort I have seen has a loop-de-loop -loop made out of rocks for tourists to run through, but only seeing them every so often in Sonic's world, where a blue hyperspeed hedgehog runs through them, is more acceptable. I would refer to the visual style of this time period as stylized realism. The worlds are at least somewhat feasible with a bit of spice thrown in, the colours for familiar objects are accurate, as well as the shape and features of such things like trees, the characters themselves have more defined and complicated proportions compared to their classic counterparts, and are thus bigger overall, so that the designs have space for the extra detail. Sonic Heroes takes all of that and throws it out the window. This game decides to just let loose and adopts a far more cartoonish art style. The colours are vibrant and varied throughout the experience, the ground has gone back to being presented as checkered patterns like in the classics, even the characters themselves have been redesigned here, Shorter, less detailed textures, and more contrasting and bright colouring. If you were looking for a continuation of the classic art style in 3D, Sonic Heroes is the closest you're going to get to that. Almost as quick as the Heroes change came along, it's gone again. Shadow the Hedgehog returns to a more adventuresque, stylized, realistic take on the Sonic world. Sure, it's darker, has more muted colours, and some sharper edges, but by and large, it is clearly closer to that than Heroes. The character models for Sonic & Co were taken from Heroes with very minor edits, which does cause them to stick out a little on some of the stages, but the game as a whole could just be seen as a variant on the adventure art style. You can see Sonic Riders take a similar direction, so barring Heroes, the early 2000s were largely consistent in their portrayal of the Sonic world. Sonic 2006 was a very ambitious project. It hoped to push the Sonic series into the next generation, and a part of that was updating the graphics. Whilst the previous games were presentable enough, by the time of Shadow the Hedgehog, it was fair to say that the series' graphical fidelity was starting to lag behind the industry. In what seemed to be a natural evolution, Sonic 06 grabbed hold of the realistic elements from the adventure games and upped the ante. 
water looked clear, lighting was more advanced, textures had more detail. These are all thanks to the technological leap to a new generation. But the presentation was also clearly more intent on maintaining a degree of realism. Buildings were more accurately scaled. Sonic and Friends had been redesigned once again to have more details in adventure, and thus were bigger again as well. Even Eggman was altered to become more physically plausible, and his mechs became more industrial than ever before. These changes are what pushed Sonic 06 more towards realism than any other category, and they are what lost a couple people along the way who felt it was too big of a shift. Of course, many of the people who talk about 06 art style today likely retroactively hate it due to the association it has with the game itself. Although 06 is without a doubt more realistic than any other game, it was not fully so. I consider it the reverse priority of adventure, where those games were stylized and formed by realism, 06 was realism informed by Sonic style. Sonic 06 still has more stylistic elements, such as loopy loops, snowboarding from avalanches, massive jungles with glowing plants and giant turtles, large robotic dogs, the egg carrier, etc. The series didn't stay in this highly realistic state for long though. Sonic and the Secret Rings was made for the Nintendo Wii, so even if it wanted to look like 06, it just wasn't technologically possible. Instead, it returned once more to the stylistic realism from pre-06 titles, such as Adventure and Shadow. Nothing is overly designed, but the environment and characters are still reasonably detailed enough. Magical orbs are scattered on stages for Sonic to collect, and many of the enemies are genies. Sonic Unleashed takes another bat at a more realistic Sonic game, but it goes about it in a very different way to 06. The environments of Sonic Unleashed are quite detailed and very vibrant. The lighting is incredible and allows the game to look great even today. The theme of world exploration in Unleashed is sold in no short part on how stunning and real the diverse locations look in comparison with our own world while still blending in fictional elements like bobsleighing through corkscrew ice slides. At the same time, the detail in Unleashed is slightly cartoonified. Tiles are just a bit too perfect. Landscapes are just a little bit too even. The main difference between 06 and Unleashed, though, are how it handles the characters. Sonic and Friends are still shown in the stylized, realistic proportions of the adventure games for the most part. Eggman's robots are a little bit more industrial, but still goofy and expressive. Humans are very much cartoony, unlike in 06 where they were realistic. Unleashed differs from even adventure in this regard, as in those games the humans looked as good as the technology of the time permitted them. This blend of cartoony characters but realistic environments is somewhat like the successor to 06. It doesn't go as hard on being realistic, but it is the second closest. For these reasons, I would label it as cartoony realism. Sonic and the Black Knight being a Wii title would once again refer back to the stylized realism that Secret Rings did, just with a bit more polish. The CGI cutscenes are a good way of viewing the intended look of the world, and through them it's clear they're supposed to be more detailed than those of Heroes, for example. Speaking of Heroes, Sonic Colors seems to take inspiration from that game's presentation. Colours are saturated, environments are chaotic, and designs are quite simplistic. As many of you know, Colours was intended to be more light-hearted and casual in experience, so adopting Heroes' more cartoony aesthetic would help it appeal to a younger or more casual audience. Unlike Heroes, the main characters have not been redesigned to match the environment, but the contrast here is less noticeable than the Heroes models in Shadow. Sonic Generations is an interesting one since it was celebrating all of Sonic at its time of release, even bringing back redesigned classic Sonic. Thankfully, since Generations features returning stages, it becomes quite easy to determine which category it falls into. The lighting is comparable to Unleash's, the environments have plenty of detail but don't conform 100% to life, and the characters are still stylized. Generations is clearly a continuation of Unleash's cartoony realism. Graphically, it is slightly less powerful than Unleashed, but in other regards, it is the same visual style. Following up from Generations, we have Sonic Lost Cause. Sorry, I mean Sonic Lost World. Made for the Wii U, it was not as far behind its main consoles as Sonic and the Secret Ring was on the Wii. However, it was still impacted by the Wii U specs. Perhaps due to this, or from some desire to once again appeal to younger audiences, Sonic Lost World falls into the cartoony visual style. 
The checkered ground returns once again, and whilst that alone doesn't mean it must be cartoony, we haven't seen such textures in more realistic focus titles. The stage in the game are quite abstract, arguably even more so than those of Sonic Heroes. The characters here are still similar to their other 2010 appearances, but the new Deadly Six characters are clearly designed with little detail in mind. The trees of the Lost World especially indicate a more cartoony inspired art style, making Lost World possibly the most cartoonish 3D game of them all. And then we have Sonic Forces. Due to how Forces reused assets from numerous games such as Lost World and Generations, it becomes quite a bit harder to pin down what category it fits best. The game lacks a solid graphical consistency, which adds to my list of problems with that game. Still, it has good lighting throughout, and some of the environments like the chemical plant are quite detailed. The robots are more industrial, but in a stylized fashion, and the Wispon guns are very cartoony. If I had to choose something, I would say Sonic Forces falls into the stylized realism group like the Black Knight, but it may be the weakest member. So. This brings us back to Sonic Frontiers, and the debate it has stirred up over if it's too realistic for Sonic. We can see it features a highly realistic landscape in the trailers, a lot of detail, dynamic lighting, and all structured in ways that look feasible to real life, barring a few unique elements. Sonic looks much the same as his other recent outings as well. Sound familiar to you? It should if you've been paying attention. Sonic Unleashed was basically trying to go for the same look. Like with all the other games we've covered, there are slight differences, such as how Frontiers seems to be trying to maintain 06's take on the environmental detail, but adopts Unleashed's more stylized contrast with the characters. My conclusion, therefore, is the art style for Sonic Frontiers is perfectly fine. More importantly, it is nothing new. As we have seen, Sonic has never had a consistent art style, and even the categories I came up with here do not perfectly account for all the differences. Frontiers just happens to have access to the most graphical power of any Sonic game to date, and combined with the fact that the last decade has been favouring cartoony designs, when you account for Sonic Boom as well, it makes this more realistic interpretation a rather stark contrast. Unleashed and 06 were not all that different upon their releases either. This simply may be down to personal preference. There's nothing wrong with having one, but it would also not be correct to assert that your favourite is the way the series always has and should be. Unlike Sonic's quill length, everyone knows longer is better. And there you have it. So many art styles and so little time to analyse them. Do you think this video was useful? And do you have a preferred style for Sonic? Comment below and let me know. Seeing this means you've made it all the way to the end, so thank you for sticking with me. I hope you have a great day and see you next time. This is the Mighty Emperor, signing off.